In the quiet alleys of Shadapur and West Delhi, a scam call centre is in operation. This group of scammers run multiple scams and will target people all over the world, including India and Europe. Thank you for contacting Federal Police Department. How may I help you? Okay, as you have the money in the form of cash with you, now we're gonna save the assets and show the government a legal proof that this is the amount that you have taken out from your bank and this is the only money that you have, right? And this is the only bank account that you're banking with. There's no other connection that you have with other bank accounts. But pretending to be the police is gonna prove their downfall. I was first alerted to this group of scammers through one of my friends, Nanobitter. I've left a link to his version of the video in the top right and it's in the description. But it was quickly very obvious that this group had CCTV. You might wonder why scammers have CCTV and it's because it's part of the building infrastructure which they rent and they really don't like it there. And in fact the odd person would either cover or turn one or two of the cameras to avoid recording what they were doing. But no amount of camera covering was going to stop a dedicated group of scam baiters recording exactly what they did and handing the information to the police. But what sort of scam were they running? Here you can see one of their scripts. It's just a modified version of the US Customs and Border script, here modified for Austria. Ultimately, they would try and persuade victims that their money in the bank was at risk and the only way of safeguarding it would be to go and buy what they termed a security card, which we all know means gift card. Hello, this call is from Interpol. The purpose of this call is to inform you that your Austrian identity has been misused for fraudulent and illegal activity. For more information, press 1. I repeat, press 1. And for anyone who did press 1, they would be forced to speak English to a scammer in this building. But how did we know that it was this building? Obviously the CCTV was a major clue to the inside of the building. Here we're tracking one person walking from the entrance right through to the rooms where the scam happened. Although there were many rooms covered by CCTV, we couldn't be sure that all of them were used for scams. But as always, it was the wireless network information which gave away the location most accurately. Here you can see the wireless networks around the building and we could pinpoint it to within 15 metres. These scammers seem to be occupying the Ojas Business Centre in Shadapur in New Delhi. And this was confirmed by comparing the CCTV with online pictures inside the call centre. Here's camera 2 with a dripping air conditioner and an online search shows the same photograph with that same air conditioning unit. Camera 4 showed one of the rooms used for scams and the online search shows the same room in a better condition. Even the corridor view on camera 7 was shown on an online picture of Ojas. But if we were going to bring these scammers down we needed evidence of their scams so we also needed audio. But thankfully, with access to the scammer's computers, we could also pick up on the audio. Here you can see a scammer's computer screen, together with her script on the bottom of that screen. She's currently scamming someone called Zisan in Austria. I am from the Federal Police Department, Miss Ofiana. This case is on our hand right now. But because most people speak German in Austria, it was difficult for some of their victims to understand what the scam was about. Because miss, this recordable line will be served as an evidence. I know, you, I believe you know what is evidence. So for evidence, we need a clear recording. And to play this recording, we need to speak in English. Because this recordable line will be played on the code house. The script itself is well tried and tested and is full of things that are likely to scare the victims. They're asked to take clear notes of things like the officer's name, the case ID, and scarily, the arrest warrant number. Now miss, I just want to inform you that as I can see here over your case file, there is an active arrest warrant that has been issued under your national ID number and your name. I will be explaining you why there is an arrest warrant and what all allegations are going under your national ID number. But first of all, you can just write down the arrest warrant number. That is M as in Mary. 
They certainly don't want any potential victims discussing this with friends or family, so they say that the whole thing needs to be kept confidential. Okay miss, so before I read out this information to you, let me tell you that this information is very confidential. As well as I provided you the case ID number and the warrant number, this is also very important and very confidential information. So you have to keep this paper aside safely with you and now you have to listen to me very carefully, okay? The language is very deliberate. They will attempt to try and get their victims to comply with everything they're saying. Usually the script goes along the lines of a car being found in the south border of Texas, but they're quite happy to adapt the script to whichever country they're scamming. Okay, so I'm going to explain you the case. As the investigation started, when, when we found an abandoned car on the south border of Vienna, and the car contained some blood spots and drugs inside it. And after the investigation, we have found that the car was rented on your name and on your national ID number. I'll not bore you with the entire script here, but suffice to say, the scammers will attempt to get their victims to either buy gift cards or alternatively download an app to their phone, convert their own money into cryptocurrency and transfer this to a mule or scammer's bank account. Scammers always work in pairs. Here, the agent is now calling her supervisor to close out this seal. The guy in the shorts and glasses is one of two supervisors who operate in this room. He takes a note of the victim's phone number and will then pretend to be her local police by spoofing the number of that local police station. This telephone number spoofing is a key element of the scam. If a sceptical victim had received a phone call from what she knew was her local police, this may help to persuade her that the whole thing was genuine. But most of their income would come from cryptocurrency. Here they're persuading a Slovakian man to download an app where he will enter his credit or debit card details, then the scammers will convert all of his money into cryptocurrency. Uh, like you have to put like residence, country residence like Slovakia. And they'll casually instruct the victim to upload their identity documents. Click on driver's license. It's disturbing to see people just about to have their money stolen and there's very little I can do to stop this because the scammers are using the very device that is the only thing that I can use to contact the victim. Now please read it what is written down. You have when the scammer gets these victims to sign up, they'll also get them to enter their credit or debit card details for a so-called refund. But of course all they'll do is buy cryptocurrency with those debit card details and transfer them to themselves. Like the card number is correct or the card number is wrong? During this sign up process, the victim will be unaware that the scammers are watching his phone via the AnyDesk application. All banking applications should detect the presence of a remote access tool like AnyDesk and prevent operation. I've already seen a few banks implement this and it should be possible for all of them to do likewise. I think so you, you have get a message from the bank and you have to put a code over there. But thankfully for this victim, fraud was detected and the transaction didn't go through. But some scams did succeed and eventually the money would work its way back to this call centre. Here's one of the bosses counting out the money which he will pay his staff in cash. And even when they couldn't steal money, they left their victims alarmed and confused. There's nobody else to choose this option because if the arrest warrant get releases, you will be arrested, not someone else. You have to go into prison. Yeah, you can take your time, just drink some water and calmly just listen to me and you have to choose one option then. You just calm down first. But unusually, this group didn't just target Australia and Europe, they also targeted India. They ran a fake recruitment scam. So mention the Bangalore, Bangalore address. So now have you filled your all details in that form? They would use legitimate websites like shine.com and pose as recruiters. Hello? No? Can I talk to Vishalakshi? Who is it? Uh, Ma'am Aruhi here from the perfectjobs.com. 
this is a recruitment okay. mediator organization that where i'm calling right now okay okay so i have in a few opportunities relevant to profile she will tell the candidates that there's a job on offer but it comes at a price opportunities which we are giving it's a paid services you are comfortable in a paid services okay now which, which company you said actually the name of a company hmm? who it's based in the bangalore deloitte india capgemini and emphasis these three particular company i have for you which is already viewed your cv and it's for the same job role it's for the team lead you're okay the problem is that none of these job opportunities actually exist and in fact they use the same jobs for absolutely everyone they attempt to recruit the scam is really about directing each of these potential recruits to browse to one of a few different websites all the websites look the same but they all have one thing in common on the surface this might look like a legitimate website but in fact none of the links do anything the only thing that actually works is the sign up part and the bit where you send a payment pg3 option yeah uh, click on yeah, okay and proceed okay button after that they were mm-hmm. showing in fact the lady you hear running this scam is this person in the red top here she is walking down a corridor so eventually we were able to work out which rooms were running which scams this would be important as we'd eventually need to lead the police to exactly where we knew these scams were happening it also helped that she used her real name when answering the phone and even named the spreadsheet of victims after her name and since the police require victims here we had a ready made one it was time to get the police involved but there were two very distinct scams happening here this is the room with the austrian german and slovakian scam where europol would be interested but there was also the indian scam where the indian authorities could take action directly this is where i involved my friend sven the only thing we weren't sure about was which floor the cameras covered so sven and neep who's taking this video actually dared to go into the scam call center itself and make sure we had the right floor we could even see them climbing the stairs and entering the building on cctv if you want to see a bit more of that check out the videos in the links below we could even see those cameras on the footage that neep took so when eventually they got to the right floor they pointed the cameras into the rooms where we suspected the scams were happening and the camera was pointed into the entrance of the fourth floor sunshine calling private limited we could confirm that this was indeed the business running the scams the next step would be to convince the police to raid this floor so while sven talked to the delhi police about the indian scam i was on to the austrian police and was able to show them pictures of every one of the scammers who ran that austrian version and it wasn't long before i heard from the police in austria one of the cybercrime specialists the chief inspector reached out to me and i was able to send them more audio and video about the austrian scams and it was just a few weeks later that the cbi in delhi acted cbi has arrested two accused in a case related to cheating extortion with the foreign nationals and other offenses four cryptocurrency wallets have also been seized with an amount worth rupees 1 crore 30 lakh found inside those wallets my colleague bhavtosh gets us more details on this big crackdown on crypto by the center operation that was carried out by the central bureau of investigation as per uh, cbi cbi they have arrested two accused in a case related to cheating extortion with for, uh, foreign national and other offenses four crypto currencies wallets have uh, uh, amounting to uh, around 1.32 crore rupees have been seized the central bureau of investigation uh, has in a statement has said that they have arrested two accused and uh, this case in fact relates to cheating Uh, uh the cbi has said that they had registered a case uh, in new delhi and subsequently the allegations are that a uh, illegal call center was being run and uh, this call center was in uh, in, uh, in in new delhi it was alleged that uh, the accused in this case were uh, involved in illegal act, acts uh, of a large scale uh, uh, cyber cheating and extortion with foreign nationals by impersonating themselves as police officers they are uh, thereby causing loss to the foreign nationals and gain to themselves 
uh, the tip off actually was given by the Europol, uh, which is a, a very similar to Interpol's uh, uh, European uh, unit or the federal police. This information was uh, shared with CBI, which uh, carried out its own investigation and arrested these uh, uh, individuals and also uh, led to recovery of uh, the cryptocurrency. So thanks to a few dedicated scam baiters, we managed to take down an entire scam call centre. Not only were the top people arrested, but the police were also able to seize crypto wallets worth over $150,000. Normally, this would be the end of the video. However, even after those raids, we noticed that the recruitment scam still continues. And in fact, even as this video goes live, the recruitment scam is still there running in the same offices. Let's just hope that the CBI can also crack down on this one. So you can probably see why these videos take a little bit longer than some other videos you may see. Obviously I couldn't release any material until the police had done their bit, but sometimes that perseverance pays off. If you would like to support me in my fight against scammers, I have a Patreon page. The link is on screen and in the description. You could possibly even buy me a coffee if you feel inclined, the link is also here. And catch me on Twitter, I'm Jim Browning 11 there. Once again, thanks for watching.